Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tyranny. Now in our last episode, we spent pretty much the entire time stuck in this little freaking tower here. And I would be lying if I didn't say that I wasn't thinking about it for a long time after I up to ended this episode. Or the last episode, I should say. I was really bothered by the fact that I spent so much time in here. And so I was going through my bags and looking for the things, and I realized that in this party stash, it gives you a whole bunch of things, and you can't necessarily see them all at once. They are divided into different parts. And so, when I went to this little part here, which is quest items, I found... Let's see, a... Incomplete charcoal rubbing. Upon right-clicking on that rubbing, this shape appeared. Which would have been really nice and helpful to have the last time I was here. So this is the shape that we need to try to attempt to make. And it looks like there might be a faint shape of a circle or something in the background, so we'll try it. See if we can get this. So it's like a two triangles with a circle, huh? Alright, so we're gonna unpause here. I'm gonna have one of our characters try to do this. So one triangle. And now for the circle itself. Oh, thank you. Yes. All right. So we're gonna reform our party. All right. Let's go ahead and move it. Well, that was stunningly easy. I would. Well, I mean, if you don't know, you don't know, right? The arcane light courses skyward, trailing off towards the horizon in the direction of Vendrian's well. You feel the ground ripped out from beneath you yet again as you drift back into the warmth of the energy surrounding you. Your awareness stretches beyond the limits of this spire, pulled in many directions at once. The light you saw racing through the sky reminds you of the tether you feel to the top of Vendrian's well. This too is a point of connection, and you are an inextricable inextricably part of it, bound as surely as the spires are to each other. The sunset spire and Lathian's crossing feel burdened by its age, as if a central linchpin somewhere in its core has weathered the centuries of oppressive weight and longs to topple. The surge of energy that courses through you, forming a link with Vendrian's well, strengthens the very stones beneath your feet. The structural weakness you detected vanishes, replaced by confidence that could keep this tower standing for millennia. And tell me where you're writing from, and how to reach you, and I will send you an iron ring for your troubles. I had this idea of a message in a bottle without the bottle. You think it'll work? If I threw a dagger up from here, I wager it could split a man on the ground in half. But I want to try. From here, even the old walls seem paltry. This sovereign view is not intended for the likes of us. The spire feels like a relay between you and Vendrian's well, bringing some transference of energy on an enormous scale. You are the first length of a chain that stretches the length of the realm. As you struggle to understand the sensation, you grow aware of whispers all around you. You listen closer, and the whispers themselves seem to travel down the tether between you and your spires, conducting heat that feels at times unbearable. They speak of your actions, of your choices, everything that led you to this place. Your name is known, 
Your banner is recognized, your deeds reported across the tiers and the Northern Empire alike. For an instant, you can see the accumulated hope and fear these whispers represent. It appears like dewdrops settling on a leaf, then trickling into a shared basin. This image is fed to you through your connection, a base metaphor that only hints at the true scope. There is power in these spires, though its source is unfamiliar. Were you to harness it, you suspect that nothing would stand beyond your reach. Unlocking the spire seems to have opened some deeper connection. I don't know what you've done, but standing near you warms my rusted plates. It makes me feel lighter somehow. Curious, I'm noting something I also observed at the spire in Vendrine's well. There's a mystic hum, and it has little beats when you walk, tiny fluctuations when you talk. Unless my senses are deceiving me, you and the spires are myst mystically attuned to each other. Most fascinating indeed. You look taller, somehow, like you could command a dozen gangs without any challengers to knife you in the back. So what is this? Constructing a library allows you to research mystical knowledge. Research edicts and artifacts. Once built, resting in any spire grants a bonus to lore and all magic skills. Training grounds. Allows you to recruit the finest skill trainers in the tiers once built. Wrestling in any spire grants a bonus to accuracy, athletics, and subterfuge. Forge grants a bonus to armor, parry, and dodge. And inf infirmary grants a bonus to endurance, will, and magic defenses. And allows you to brew potions and other consumables. The forge allows you to repair weapons and armor, forge new items, and parry with armor and... Or armor, parry, and dodge. Those are all really, really strong for me, so I'm going to get that. Are you sure you want to build this upgrade? This action cannot be cancelled. Yes. Ooh. Nice. So, it has a maintenance cost. So in five days, I need two copper rings and 50 bronze rings. Okay, so now I have to work for money. I have a job now, basically. Alright. And then going to the Mountain Spire just gives me huge bonuses to all these. The Master of Smiths. Greetings, Fate Binder. How may I help you? I want you to forge something for me. Oh boy. The artifact commander's plate. Wow, it's one iron ring though. Wow, these are awesome. Only Bear can grip this. Huh. Alright, well, that's too expensive for me. I found this hilt in the old walls, what can you tell me about it? It looks like the hilt of a sentinel, one of the finest swords the forge found has ever made. With this, I could recreate it if you want. Are you kidding? Of course I want you to do that. Sentinel can now be created with access to a Spire Forge upgrade and proper materials. Do I make it myself? Select a weapon from your inventory to upgrade. Wow, it's expensive. What are these? Iron ingots. 35 prong rings, upgrades to an exquisite quality. Eh. Okay, so I can do that. 
Tell me about the forge. If you want to upgrade your weapons or armor, you can use any of the anvils. It will be simple enough if you have the materials. If you need something that requires a master smith, like require like forging a one of a kind item, come talk to me and I'll see what I can do. Well, I'm too broke to do anything now, but wow, okay. And I got a bonus to all my skills, and I get a bonus to my skills by simply having this forge, and it looks awesome. Alright, I think it's time to move on. Alright, so Ventrian's well, I think that's where we are, isn't it? Hmm. Alright, let's open up our spellbook thing here. And let's see. The Seats of Power. Two of five. Across the tiers there are a number of spires that dot the horizon. Two you have claimed have proven to be a valuable asset in the war effort in the tiers. Claiming the rest would help you widen your conquest. Okay. Uh, all uncovered evidence will be listed here. Evidence against the voices in Nirat will be listed here. The disfavored general has regrouped his forces at the mountain fortress of Iron Hearth. Travel there to discuss the Archon of War's next move. Are you sure you want to instantly teleport from the Sunset Spire to the Mountain Spire? Sure! That's... That's gonna save us a lot of time later. Alright, well I don't think I can use this mysterious device. So let me teleport here, but I'm not really sure if that has anything to do with me. But I think it brings me closer to where I need to go. On it. Which is Iron Hearth, two days. I don't think I've came from this side before. Sorry, I can't. Can't do that. Moving cautiously. His favorite soldier chuckles with disdain at the Scarlet Corps fighter. Consider it, not for a second. We pick our soldiers from elite northern families. We don't recruit from flies buzzing over a mass grave. Are the disfavored so narrow-minded? My gang strength discovered us from half my gang strength delivered us from half a dozen battles with a line of fallen enemies in our wake. Not many conscripts can say the same. The question is not a matter of your skill, but of your breeding, your training, and your pedigree. Hail, Grave Ash, Fate Finger, if I might take a moment of your time. What do you need? This person comes representing a Scarlet Chorus gang. What did you call yourselves again? The Greening Bleeders. We have a long and storied reputation in the Scarlet Chorus ranks. Killers of the highest order, my gang. Before I was a boss here, I ran with the Broken Shits, the Salty Nightmares, and the Trap Gang. Everyone made a name for themselves during the war. 
You made up at least two of those gangs, and don't even bother denying it. Just be careful of those names you toss around when there's a former boss standing with an earshot, you little pissant. Verse, so kind of you to chime in with your corrections. In any case, he's asking to join the disfavored, which is out of the question. I've explained the numerous reasons why we can't allow it, but the wretch won't listen. Do you want me to decide the matter? You must know Kyros' law back to front, and I trust you know our traditions as well. If it peels this lamprey off my backside, I'll allow it. Speaking for my gang, we'll accept your judgment. We're eager to crack some tearsmen's skull with Kyros' army again, no matter what color they wear. Well, let's take your testimony first. Uh, well, I already know that the reason why recruits can't join the disfavor is because they have a very strict training regiment and they're very disciplined, which is not easily found. Uh, I now already know why he's interested in getting joining the disfavored. And why did you leave the Scarlet Chorus? That's the one question. Our old gang boss fell at the last battle of Entrance Well. We saw how the disfavored operated and we realized it was a chance for a better life, a longer one too. Desertion happens every day in the Scarlet Chorus, I can tell you that we won't be missed. He says that like he's boasting. Only the shit heel recruits who never make a name for themselves are overlooked at muster. Well, I gotta give it to Ver. She's a pretty tough girl, lady. And she holds her own. And I've really come to depend on her for a lot of the archery and everything, so... In this case, where I don't really have any way of knowing anything about them other than this initial engagement and conversation, I'll defer to Verse's judgment of him, and she pretty much didn't like him. And she doesn't seem to like most people, but... Uh, that's not the end of the world, so... I'm ready to make my ruling. Um... You are no longer in the military. Go live civilian lives and keep Kiros' peace as best you can. It was either that or destroy and execute him for basically betraying and running away from his allies. So, mercy, compassion, more than they deserve, but I'm glad to see it all the same. We've seen too much in the Scarlet Chorus to return to a normal life, but I won't deny that putting down roots is a tempting idea. In time, the Chorus may just conscript us all over again. As long as it gets the amount of ashes for it, it suffices for my needs. Thank you, Fatebinder. That was a long, drawn-out conversation. Edict of Storms? The winds of Kyros' edict fill the air with thick clouds of rust from the decaying weapons and armor that litter the ground. No natural wind, it hampers your every movement, so accuracy and range damage is reduced. Perfect. Binder, can I have a word? Let's see what they want. Kind of you to stop and chat. I'm in a sticky situation and no one in my gang is alive or around to help me out. Stop wasting the Fate Binder's time. He has better things to do than to listen to some criminal's mewling. I'll be the judge of that. Tell me your problem, soldier. Thanks for hearing me out. The disfavored aren't keen on conversation, otherwise I wouldn't be here. It's impossible to get a word in edgewise. Soldiers caught me outside a breach in the old walls. That's it. I wasn't inside, I hadn't stuck my toe through the threshold, and I wasn't dancing with any bane. I have a healthy relationship with self-preservation. Then why were you arrested? You're only hearing one side of the story, Fatebinder. Our scouts observed this wretch ready to enter the old walls. Her account is flawed, her guilt witnessed by multiple trustworthy northerners. I'm sorry, is ready to enter the best you have? Because I just as easily argue that you're ready to get knife between your shoulder blades, but it doesn't count for shit until I see blood and bronze. I didn't go into the old walls, case closed. Alright, well before I make a, a decision on the matter, I need your mutual cooperation. If you ask me, this prisoner has already been tried and sentenced, but if this little game will silence her caterwauling, then be my guest. I'll stand by your decision, it couldn't land me anywhere worse than this. Uh... 
Did your gang cause the breach in the old walls? What? Are you kidding me? You would take incredible force or incredible magic to pass through the ancient barrier. We had neither at our disposal. Either one of Kyrus's edicts or some local mage caused the breach. Whatever ruling you make, don't pin that on me. I'm inclined to agree. It doesn't make that mistake of giving this one too much credit. Alright, well I'm ready to make my judgment. Yeah, you're sure about that? Because I can't help but feel we haven't covered a lot of territory. Yep, I'm ready. Let's have it then. I hope you got everything you needed. At the very least, the evidence is insufficient to prove the charges. You're free to go. Shrewd, Fatebinder. Very shrewd. I think you'll do just fine. Legal technicalities are my favorite kind. Go rejoin the war effort with a new gang recruit. Start your own if you have a mind to. That's an order. Yes, ma'am. And if you are gathering a force, I'd kill my way into your good graces. Pity I have to settle for less. This goes against my orders and my reason. But I cannot argue against the ruling of Tunian's agent. I'll let you go. Try and stay out of trouble. I'll stay out of the old walls, but that's all I can promise. Okay. Ooh, Akalos. Yes. Who is this Akalos? Welcome back, Fatebinder. You need something from me? Tell me about the Scarlet Chorus Lieutenant. Seems our troops have this little maggot of a Scarlet Chorus Lieutenant cornered over at the Kyoto Village. From what I'm hearing, it's the same guy who's been ransacking our caravans the past few weeks. If it wasn't already handling something for ass for Ash, I'd go and skin the filth myself. You being here simplifies matters. Make sure this lieutenant doesn't leave the village with his life. Alright, I'll handle it. Good of you to pitch in. No one will mourn the loss of one more Chorus Rat. He marks the location on your map. Farewell. Um, well, I clicked the wrong thing. Alright. Broken Spear, new quest. But before we go there, we're gonna go up here and talk to Osmia. Alright, Miss Osmia. You must be the Fate Binder of Tunian. Welcome to Iron Hearth. I'm sure that Graven Ash appreciates any help that you can offer. Circumstances have a way of coming together so that the disfavored are always stretched thinner than we would like. What can I do for you? Why are you the disfavored so overworked? We're trying to shoulder the brunt of this civilian war without the strength of numbers. The Scarlet Chorus can throw a thousand disposable bodies at an issue without a second thought, but we're forced to be a little bit more discriminating. We might be trained to deal with the stress of combat and all-night drills, but we're fatigued even by the high standard we set for ourselves. Not that I need to burden an agent of the court with my misgivings. Once the war is over and the tears are properly subdued, my hope is that Kiros dispatches some relief troops to support the occupation. We all deserve a season of rest. The court is always receptive to the needs of soldiers. Your point is noted. That's... That's very generous of you to fit, say, Fatebinder. I'm grateful to know that someone is listening. Where were you during the conquest? After the Edict of Storms hit, I spent some time among the ruins of Stalwart, digging out survivors from the Legion. Afraid I didn't find much. You must have moved on by then, or else we would have assembled a team to evacuate you. She glances at Beric. My prison moved with me. There was no reason to tarry. I still think about the brothers and sisters we left behind. Sometimes I can imagine that I hear their voices carry on the wind. Well, I'll be on my way. I'm a quartermaster, huh? Show me your wares. Alright, let's sell as much as I can. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be buying very many more items if I can simply craft really good unique ones now at the Spire.
Alright, let's try this again. Trade that away, get the money. Alright, there's one more person over here we need to talk to. Grave Ash. Graven Ash. Nice, Malaise is super close to leveling up. Will do. For some reason, all the characters didn't want to go together. You got it. On it. All right, let's see what he has. Fate Binder. No one in recent history has reached the pinnacle of a spire, and yet you step to the top as if it were intended for your occupation. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, I have nothing to say to myself. Do I need to explain it? No, I just did it. I wonder how Tunian ever stomached your intractable nature. When the war is finished, I will have to ask him. What is it you require? How can I continue my service of the disfavored? These are troubled times for us all, but none more so than the forces of Kiros. Our organized offense has splintered, loyalties are challenged at every level of command, and much that we have built during the conquest crumbles under its own weight. We had thought the Vendrian Guard were the final death rattle of this region's defiance. We were wrong. The tears have risen up against Kiros, emboldened by their countrymen, and while the disfavored labored to maintain or order, that serpent, the voices of Narat, grows his army of lunatics and sellswords, preparing to lash out when we least is suspected. I can only imagine that the voices is driving his gang's mad with plots to storm this fortress. There can be no peace while the voices of Narat lives, and no order while the Scarlet Corps rampage across these lands. The elimination of chaos must be our first priority. Then we will have time to govern the, Tiros, the tears of Kiros as heroes intended. Can it depend upon your support against the Scourge? What would you have me do? Our position of authority in the Blade Grave is far from secure. We need to establish ourselves in the region to order to cultivate our strength for the battle to come. As soon as I am confident in our chances, we will depart this realm and wipe the Quora's threat from the face of Teratus. The Unbroken, former daughters and sons of Stalwart, vex our efforts to secure this region. The Edict of Storm offers them cover. They slip past our patrols in the light of day, hiding their movement behind clouds of dust and debris. Kairos casts this blight on the country to set an example, not to plague those of us loyal to the north. You must travel to the Sentinel Stand and seek out Stratus Herodin. He is the last of the old Stoward bloodline, who called themselves reagents. Put them to the sword and end this edict once and for all. Consider him dead. Find the last regent, kill him, end this edict of storms, and staunch this seeping ward of rebellion once and for all. The downfall of the unbroken and the old regent will send a message to the tears. Our rule is absolute, and dissidents will not be tolerated. Consider it done. Alright, so now I can travel to Sentinel Stand. That's nice. There is one final matter to discuss. My daughter went missing in the second year of the conquest. I have reason to believe she is trapped in the fortress of Sentinel Stand. If you can find Amelia, bring her home to me. You're just now mentioning this? She's been there for years? If I find her, I'll ensure her safe return. But, I mean, no guarantees, right? That is all I ask. Amelia is but one soldier, yet if I had the forces to dispatch, I would make her retrieval my highest priority. She is a commander of the highest renown and a paragon of northern values. Feetbinder, I offer you my support on this mission. The Bladegrave is a place of... 
of memory. I left many cohorts buried among the ruins, and no small part of myself as well. Ah, no small part of you. Maybe we'll get to improve you? Could you elaborate? The matter is a sensitive one, but I fear to speak it in the company of the great general, although he doubtless knows it already. Speak on, son of Barakonin. Nothing I've seen you accomplish in the field has diminished you in my eyes, and I know my soldiers as well as I know myself. I lost my countrymen by the hundreds in the last day of the Stalwart campaign, and for my troubles I became fused in this armor. The blade grave is the last pace that I ever felt human. That is all I have to say about it now. The last battle of Stalwart was a terrible time, perhaps most of all for you, those of you who survived. I mourn those who were lost and recite their names often during the morning drills. We cannot restore their broken bodies to the north, but we can remember them as they were. You have much invested in this mission. Of course you can accompany me. I appreciate that, Fatebinder. Graven Ash is attentive and understanding to each of his troops, and it pleases me to see his example in you. And in you, Armored One, never forget that I found you at the mere germination of your potential, and you have accomplished much in the ensuing years. Thank you, General. Your map is already marked with the positions of Sentinel Stand. It would take me a hundred lifetimes to forget those old walls or the day that the edict shattered our advance. Let's be off then. Yes. Okay, so we got... What? Two new missions? We got Sentinel Stand, we got a little side quest, and we can possibly rescue Amelia. That's quite a few little tasks. Finally, we have something to do. Alright, not gonna go to Sentinel Stand yet. We're gonna go here to Cato Village first. Four days. Okay. Confront mouth breather Nefcio. Oh, jeez. I'll stay downwind of our enemies. All right, so we go invisible. You didn't see nothing. Right, there's some over here we can loot. Stepping lightly. It's not a very big place. Oh, what have we got here? Alright, the guys in purple are... look like they might be on our team, so let's come from this side. Alright, well, here we go. Throw down your weapons, mouth breather Nefcio, and I give you my word that you and your men will be brought back to Ash unharmed. Only to face hard labor or the executioner's axe? Would Ash just forget about the caravans we hijacked? You think you can just sweep that under the rug? I don't deny that you will have to answer to Grave and Ash. His word is law, and you will find yourself subject to his mercy. I'm already familiar with Ash's mercy. He doesn't tolerate the Scarlet Chorus, no matter if we had a decorated career. I could earn my name ten times over under the voices of Norat, and it wouldn't matter in Graven Ash's estimate. As far as he's concerned, we're just brigands and pirates, and he grudges us for fighting in his war. This one has a fair point. Graven Ash never wanted the Scarlet Chorus to join the invasion, and only ever saw us as an obstruction. Makes you wonder how he would have fared on his own. I wager that his favor would have felt themselves into ex extinction. 
or into a better organized conquest free of the, the division or disagreement. Conjecture is pointless. We will never know. I think the Scarlet Chorus were pretty helpful. I mean, Beric did help. I don't want to just say that they didn't do anything. I'm glad that someone thinks so. A girl can't help but feel that the Scarlet Chorus doesn't get there too. This is about to get interesting. Debate all that you want. You have nowhere to go. Drop your weapons or die where you stand. Sucks, sucks to your options. I have a better idea. Get her, boys. Alright, so we got all kinds of enemies here. What have we got? We've got a horde, a horde, a horde, and a horde. Okay, it doesn't tell me. But it looks like a dagger, a sword shield, a sword shield, and something else. Alright, Varric, you go crazy and attack the closest target. Uh, Malaise, you need to get in there right now and sunder one of these targets. You need to cast your spell on Malaise that will heal him if he gets low on health. And then you need to shoot your fire arrow on this closest target. Look at that! Get your core! Alright, she's gonna continue attacking. Varric's gonna keep attacking with his special ability on this close enemy. Malaise is attacking. He's going to use his root ability and hopefully root all these guys. And the healer is going to use his buff ability to make us all stronger. Nice, so Malay's rooted them all. And now I can drain their strength. Will do. Get back here! I got it. She tried to run. Take care of it. Fireball! Fireball! On it. Get him. Wow. Alright, so what do we got? Oh, we got some different kinds of stuff, huh? Okay, so let's see, we got some gloves. Why am I wearing leather gloves? I thought I had heavy gloves. She's got my heavy gloves, that's why. Alright, there's some leather gloves. Give you the heavy gloves. Because you have that bonus when you're wearing heavy on every slot. Those blue weapons make a huge difference. What's the worst that could... Oh, look who it is. Right. Alright, well you get in this corner then, you get in that corner. Sorry, can't do that. Why not? Of course. Let's be off. No way. Hey you, I'm assuming from that look on your face you're not here to help me escape. Turn yourself over to the disfavored and be spared. As if I would ever believe such a lie, I'd just as quickly run my blade through my own guts and face a swifter death. But if I have to start by killing you, it would be boring to die alone. Oh jeez. Okay. Barrack. What is that? A Scarlet Fury? A Bloodhound? What the heck is a Bloodhound? A... Mouth Breezer, Nefso, and a Blood Chanter. Barrack, you use your attack ability on this close by guy. You use your fireball and see if you can hit all three of them. That would be awesome. You use your buff on Malaise to make sure he does not die. Malaise, you charge in and use your sunder on Mouth Breezer. You need to get to him ASAP. Nah. Nice. So he's got that engaged. You are engaging him also. So use your attack. 
Uh, Malaise. She's already attacking that turn and engage her instead. Yep. Alright, you cast your buff on all of us to make us tougher. After that, cast the buff on Malaise to make him tougher. After that, cast your buff on all three of them to make them do more damage. Alright, you cast your fireball. Cast your fireball right there, and then after that, cast your fire arrow on the blood chanter. Let's have it! Then. Nice. Alright, so I want her to just keep shooting the guy in the back with the arrows. Malaise is going to continue to keep attacking his target and use his healing ability to make himself tougher. Barak is just going to continue to beat the heck out of Mouth Breezer Nefsu, who is literally dead already. Bear your skeleton out by your ass! Malaise is just getting tougher and tougher. Wow, what a huge fire spell. That was awesome. Alright, so Malaise is going to do his quicken spell now. She's going to continue to keep shooting the enemy in the rear. And now that uh, everyone is attacking Malaise, Barrack's going to break out and go fight Bloodshanter in the back. Bloodshanter is nearly dead, being attacked from multiple targets. Now Malaise is under attack from nearly all the enemies, so I'm going to have my archer cast a spell on him to give him more dodge. And then I'm going to, now that he has quicken, Gonna use a dart and hit this enemy here and hopefully kill him. <laughs> Barrack is free to turn and attack the enemy in the back. <laughs> now that she's here, she can use her archer attack in conjunction with Malaise on this enemy here. And he's gonna use Sunder. Actually, no, he's not. He's gonna use the ability that she's got. <laughs> Eric's going to turn and engage the next target. Alright, healer's going to attack. After casting... Oh, well, yeah, just keep attacking. Alright, they're going to use their spell in conjunction with this guy to work together. Barrack's going to use his slash on the enemy. Nice, finished her. Switch to these guys and attack them. I don't even think Malaise even really took any damage there. What have we got? Wow, okay. Some nice little gloves. Alright, so Malaise has leveled up. Let's click on him and see what we can get. Alright, so we have another skill point. So he's getting pretty darn tough. I actually like that. So I'm going to actually go for another point in accuracy and armor deflection. Alright, for his skills, let's see. Right now he has increased shield effectiveness by 40%. I can increase that up to 80%. Seems pretty nice. Enter a defensive stance, gaining a bonus to armor, which is nice, but the taunting stance is completely necessary. Leadership. The party gains use of one additional weapon set and can switch weapons in combat. No. Adds a marking attack to the thrust ability. Attacks against the marked target gain bonus accuracy. The party gains two additional quick item slots and consumables. Agility. You can move faster while in combat. Hmm. 
I guess I can just continue to build on his defense since he has really high accuracy. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to definitely get that. He, since he has this ability that gives him a 6% chance to attack twice, sorry, and a 4% chance to attack three times, and a 10% bonus to weapon damage, and I'm, I'm putting a lot of points at accuracy so he doesn't miss, then getting this skill here, which allows two additional ten enemies to engage at one time, and a large bonus to enemies that are stunned or prone, and then this ability will allow me to get an additional enemy that can be engaged, so I can actually engage up to three enemies, and if they move away, I can attack them all. So they're kind of like locked in with me, plus the taunt. And then eventually I'll be able to get this one, which will give me uh, additional enemies that can be engaged as well. Nice, I like. So let's see, Crippling Coil, which is the root, and Touch of Atrophy. I'm going to get rid of Touch of Atrophy because, to be quite honest, I just don't use it that much. She uses her Fireball and Firewall pretty often. I don't want to get any rid of any of these core spells yet. Oh well, Titan's Touch, 45 seconds is a good amount of time. Alright, so that's a good stopping point for that. So we finished all that. Now let's go ahead and keep moving on. So I'm going to travel to the top of the mountain spire. Or I'm going to travel to sunset spire and then teleport across. Okay. So this seems like a good place for us to go ahead and stop this episode. Thank you for everyone that's been watching since the very beginning, and I hope to catch you in the next one as we continue our adventure across the world of tyranny.